Hi, You Can Heal family. We are starting Deuteronomy chapter 1 today. My name is Sheena Major, and I want to thank you for uh, going through the Old Testament with me. Like I always say, it's so good to know that I'm not alone reading and that uh, we're in this together. So I thank God for that. My name is Sheena, and uh, we're healing on this channel, and the best way to do that is to Stick with God because he's a friend that is closer than a brother or sister, right? <laughs> In this case. So, yeah, I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful. I was just looking through my phone at some pictures of my grandson. So, I'm just all, like, smiling. And uh, Bria just sent me a picture of him all wrapped up like a little burrito for the night for sleeping. And he's just so sweet. So, Feeling thankful and blessed. So let's begin. Enough of that. Deuteronomy chapter 1. The Preamble of the Covenant. This book records the words that Moses spoke to all the people of Israel while they were in the wilderness east of the Jordan. They were camped in the Jordan Valley near Suf, between Paran on one side and Tafel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Desahab on the other. Normally, it takes only 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea, going by the way of Mount Seir. But 40 years after the Israelites left Mount Sinai on a day in midwinter, Moses gave these speeches to the Israelites, telling them everything the Lord had commanded him to say. This was after he had defeated King Sion, of the Amorites who had ruled in Heshbon and King Og of Bashan who had ruled in Ashtoroth and Adrai. Oh, 11 days <laughs> took 40 years. Well, let's not be hard headed. Let's do what the Lord uh, requires of us. Amen. Sometimes we get ourselves in situations that we don't really need to be in or find ourselves in stuff longer than it needs to be um, going on. So let's, let's follow after God. Now the next little section is from Mount Sinai to Kadesh. It says, So Moses addressed the people of Israel while they were in the land of Moab east of the Jordan River. And this is referencing Exodus 18. He began to explain the law as follows. When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, You have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, and the coastal plain. Go to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon and all the way to the great Euphrates River. I am giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it, for it is the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to all their descendants. At that time, I told you, you are to, oh, hold on, you are too great a burden for me to carry all by myself. The Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars, and may the Lord, the God of your ancestors, multiply you a thousand times more and bless you as he's promised. But how can I settle all your quarrels and problems by myself? Choose some men from each tribe who have wisdom, understanding, and a good reputation, and I will appoint them as your leaders. So I remember um, in November, you guys, November 2nd, 22, we read this, we we're digging in a little bit. And we went and read this. So verse 14 says, You agreed that my plan was a good one. So I took the wise and respected men you had selected from your tribes and appointed them to serve as judges and officials over you. Some were responsible for a thousand people, some for a hundred and some for fifty and some for ten. I instructed the judges you must be perfectly fair at all times, not only to fellow Israelites, but also to the foreigners living among you. 
When you make decisions, never favor those who are rich. Be fair to lowly and great alike. Don't be afraid of how they will react, for you are judging in the place of God. Bring me any cases that are too difficult for you, and I will handle them. And at that time, I gave you instructions about everything you were to do. Verse 19 at Kadesh. Then, just as the Lord our God directed us, we left Mount Sinai and traveled through the great and terrifying wilderness, which you yourself saw, and headed toward the hill country of the Amorites. When we arrived at Kadesh Barnea, I said to you, You have now reached the land that the Lord our God is giving us. Look, he has placed it in front of you. Go and occupy it as the Lord. And the God of your ancestors has promised you, don't be afraid and don't be discouraged. But you responded, first, let's send out scouts to explore the land for us. They will advise us on the best route to take and decide which towns we should capture. This seemed like a good idea to me, so I chose 12 scouts, one from each of your tribes. They crossed into the hills and came to the valley of Eshcol and explored it. They picked some of its fruit and brought it back to us. And they reported that the land the Lord our God had given us was indeed a good land. But you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God and refused to go in. You murmured and complained in your tents and said, The Lord must hate us, bringing us here from Egypt to be slaughtered by these Amorites. How can we go on? Our scouts have demoralized us with their report. They say that the people of the land are taller and more powerful than we are and that the walls of their towns rise high into the sky. They have even seen giants there, the descendants of Anna. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I said to you, don't be afraid. The Lord your God is going before you. He will fight for you just as you saw him do in Egypt. And you saw how the Lord your God cared for you again and again here in the wilderness just as a father cares for his child. Oh, that's so comforting. Some of us, you know, maybe didn't have dads who were around, right? And we can just look at that scripture and I can just quickly know that my father, my heavenly father cares for me. And you too, so much. So that's good. Um, verse 32 says, but even after all he did, you refuse to trust the Lord your God, who goes before you looking for the best places to camp, guiding you by a pillar of fire at night and a pillar of cloud by day. When the Lord heard your complaining, he became very angry, so he solemnly swore, Not one of you from this entire wicked generation will live to see the good land I swore to give your ancestors, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, he will see this land because he has followed the Lord completely. Oh, that's so good. How many times do we, does God tell us to do something or to go forward and we don't because we're scared of this and that? You know, they were like, oh, there's giants there, there's this, but the Lord told them it was their land to take. Oh, we've got to move forward just a little bit at a time if that's all you can do. And hey, listen, if things don't work out, then you know you're not in God, it's not God's will. So thank God they didn't work out, right? Oh, talking to myself. I really am. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. I keep, oh gosh. All right, let me just keep going. God help me. <laughs> Verse uh, 37. And the Lord was also angry with me because of you. And he said to me, you will never enter the promised land. Instead, your assistant Joshua, son of Nun, will lead the people into the land. Encourage him as he prepares to enter it. I will give the land to your innocent children. You are afraid they would be captured, but they will be the ones who occupy it. As for you... Turn around now and go on back through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Then you confessed, we have sinned against the Lord. We will go into the land and fight for it as the Lord our God has told us. 
so your men strapped on their weapons, thinking it would be easy to conquer the hill country. But the Lord said to me, Tell them not to attack, for I will not go with them. If they do, they will be crushed by their enemies. This is what I told you, but you would not listen. Instead, you again rebelled against the Lord's command and arrogantly went into the hill country to fight. But the Amorites who lived there came out against you like a swarm of bees. They chased and battered you all the way from Zir to Onla. Then you returned and wept before the Lord, but he refused to listen. So you stayed there at Kadesh for a long time. Yeah, that's probably where a lot of those ears began adding up. Remember, the 11 days was 40 years. So, yeah, it's not worth it. We need to obey God. We definitely do. We definitely do. So I think we're off to a good start. That was chapter 1 of Deuteronomy. We did it. We're moving right along. How exciting is this? How exciting is this? I used to read my Bible app every day or listen to it. But hey, now I get to listen to my own self read through the Word of God. And that's kind of cool. <laughs> I crack myself up. All right, you can help family. I love you. I'll talk to you in the morning tomorrow. We'll be back together again. Always remember that true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. Bye.